friends, I have something very interesting to show you today. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm very excited to try it out. So the other day, someone called at Full Middle Malchemist tagged me on a TikTok video that is about this website called Taylor Nova. And the idea of Taylor Nova is that it is an online fashion design software where you can input your own measurements and it will give you custom made clothing and you can design quite a lot of different styles. You can design from top skirts, pants, dresses, and jumpsuits. And you can change things in those, like you can add pockets, you can change the bust studs, you can do woven or knit material, you can change the sleeves, and they've got a lot of different sleeve types. You can change the neckline. And then it gives you a pattern that you can download and sewing instructions. And you also get the first two designs for free. Kind of sounds too good to be true. Maybe it is, or maybe it's the most amazing thing that ever been created for all sewists out there. So let's figure it out. Uh, I'm gonna try and make a design on this to fit me and we'll see how we go. By the way, this isn't sponsored. Uh, if it was sponsored, I feel like I wouldn't be able to give an unbiased review, so. So I figured for the first attempt, I would not make something super complicated. Maybe I will just do like a cute knit top. Okay, so it's just giving me like a basic bodice piece and what I'm able to do here. So I get to choose from a bunch of different styles. These ones up the top here are, are all midriff tops. Oh, guess what? I'm not gonna go for a crop top. I'm gonna go for something longer that can be tucked into pants. Amazing. This is new for me. So I'm gonna choose, okay, high hip top. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna go with knit fabric for this one as well um, because I'm just really in a knit frame of mind right now. Okay, so I've filtered out the search, narrowed it down, and I've still got all of these things to choose from. So I can choose from all of these different styles. Um, we've got some interesting like diamond waist styles here. I also really quite like the ones that have the ruching at the bust, so I think I might do something like that. Quite like the curved hem as well. I think I'm gonna go with this curved hem top with ruching at the bust. And you can see on the side the pattern is updating over here. That's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm gonna choose some sleeves for this. What'll look good with this? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of different sleeves. Oh, ooh, you go super fancy like double ruffles. I get full bell sleeves. I do love a bishop sleeve. I think that could be really cute. Maybe slightly longer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's put the uh, sleeve over here. For some reason we still have the inter, the what's gonna call it? The facing. The facing for the arm holes. I'm not sure why because we don't need that anymore because we've got this. Okay, so now we'll go for neckline. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go for a square neckline. That's pretty cute. So at the back, it's split it into two pieces, but I think, yeah, we can find one with no seam. It's a knit top, so it doesn't need a zipper opening or anything like that. It's stretchy, I can just put it straight on. Yeah, those ruffles are a little bit over the top. <laughs> uh, over the top, get it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no ruffles, please. Ooh, and then I can choose a color as well, or I can put in fabric. It just looks like the random JPEGs of fabric. Okay, that doesn't look so good. I might just color it in. What fabric will I use? I'll just do silver for now, because I don't even know what I have in my stash. Okay, is that my design? Is that it? I'm very excited. This is really cute. So uh, I didn't mention this before, but um, it's also made to fit my measurements. I put my measurements in here. Recommend having someone help you do this if you can. What I really like about these measurements is that it has room for bellies. That's so exciting. Representation for D bellies. I've never seen this before. All right, um, so this pattern is set to fit me. So now we go into the specs and it's gives me the measurements that like all the different parts will have of the actual garment. And then I'm also able to add ease. Um, ooh, 
Okay, it asks what type of knit you're gonna be using. I should probably go and find the fabric I want for this project. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm trying to decide between polka dots and lilac. Oh, that's what this pattern thing will be useful for. Yeah. That'll be the lilac. Very cute. Yeah, I think I like the polka dot better. I think that goes more with the palette of my current wardrobe, so I'm gonna go with that. So we're going back to that ease. Now we've got to measure the stretchiness of this fabric. Um, and they have a calculator to do that with. That's exciting. So the one thing that really stresses me out about sewing with knit fabric particularly is that the amount of stretch in the fabric can differ quite a lot and that can change the size of the pattern you need. I think I was like a medium with one fabric in one stretchy pattern and an extra large in another just because the difference of the stretch in the fabric. So it's really good that uh, they have a calculator for it. Okay, so we're gonna call this fabric a high stretch knit. What does different fits look like? I definitely want it to be fitted. Here's the shirt. This is the sewing instructions. Oh my god. Wow, it's like given me all of the sewing instructions that I need for all the different parts I have. Okay, I think this is just out of beta mode and a lot of things still seem to be under construction and the website does seem a little slow. Like I think a lot of things are still coming. I should be fine. Like honestly, I probably don't even really need the instructions. I have never done ruching at the bust. So that's probably the main thing I'll need instructions for. So now I think I've done everything. I'm gonna download the pattern. Oh, also I can figure out the, the length of fabric I need. That's a, that's a really cool feature. I found that the the night and uh, was immediately messaging all my friends because that is exciting. You'll see, you'll see, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, so we put that down and check this out. It's got the pattern, like, uh, not the pattern. <laughs> It's got the layout of the pattern put down on the fabric so you know how to get the most out of your fabric with the optimal layout. I'm very excited to get started on this, so I'm gonna download my pattern, print out the instructions, and let's get started. But first... Ad break! Here we are again to tell you about Squarespace. Lochi? Where am I? Welcome to the Squarespace. It is a space in which everything is squares. Wait, I'm meant to be helping Annika film an ad for the website Squarespace, but you're saying this is THE Squarespace? Indeed it is. And now you are safe. Here, have some wine. Thanks. Oh, of course, they're just squares. Yeah, square stuff is kind of our whole thing. What about that, though? That's a squirkle. Come, my friend. Let me teach you all about the Squarespace. The Squarespace is a place where your creative visions can come to life. Except stay out of that corner, it's 90 degrees. What is a creative idea that you've had recently that you have wanted to get started on but have never just fully believed? Well, I really wanted to make a website for this idea I had about a ride sharing service where all the drivers would be dressed as Adam Driver. It's called Adam Driver's Drivers. Incredible idea. And? It is done. Come, look. Wait, that's my idea. It does look more professional. That is what we do here in the Squarespace. Also, I just used an award-winning template. It's really quite easy. Huh, just like that. In the Squarespace, getting your creative idea off the ground is as easy as a snap of one's fingers. In fact, now I've set up a page for podcasting with audio blocks. Well, I've actually wanted to do my own podcast for ages. I've just sent out an email campaign to all of your contacts, letting them know about the new podcast. Uh, this is kind of awkward, but... You want to see who clicked on your link, don't you? Traffic overview. Ah, wow, you've got 57 views already. That was easy. Wait. I'm not just gonna steal my idea, right? Of course not. You own all the content on your Squarespace creation. Wow, thanks. All right, don't get all triangle on me. It is our pleasure, friend. And if you would ever like to visit the Squarespace again, here is the key. Thanks. Oh, it's just a square. Hey, what's red right and square? An uncool tomato. <laughs> Oh, thank God, Luciano, you're back. Okay, we gotta get started on this ad. Um, we're really late posting the video. No need. I think we've already got it. 
by it, make your creative dreams come true. Go to squarespace.com Squarespace. for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, she is the key. Head to squarespace.com slash Annika for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. What are you, what are you doing? We're meant to do that part last. What are you... All space is square. Square space. And that concludes the weirdest ad I've ever done. But do go check out Squarespace and a thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I printed it out. First, I gotta test this. Um, look, I already tested it and it, it it's the right size. But um, if you ever do this yourself, make sure you only do the first page first. You gotta check if this calibration page is right because otherwise the entire pattern will be off. And it's a lot of paper. <laughs> So the first page is, it's like all the different pattern pieces and just a bunch of data of all the different sizes of all those bits. That's cool. I've got to lay it out like this. I'll be folding and gluing the edges down. So you know what this is good for? A time lapse. Interpretive tape and glue, glue, glue. So what I'm doing is folding each margin and then gluing it onto the bit where it needs to go. Um, I used to chop off the margins with um, some scissors and that actually makes things unnecessarily complicated and folding them so much easier. I only just realized that probably most of you already knew that that is the easier way to piece together a PDF pattern, but uh, I didn't and the 5% of you who also didn't know that, right? It's so much easier. Mind blown, right? <laughs> That's how I felt the other day. We're not gonna worry about this piece because this armhole facing is not needed. I'm not sure why it's on the pattern. I think Taylor Nova still be working out the kinks there. Also, I forgot to mention this when I was on the computer, but the seam allowance here is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And you can also change that to whatever you prefer on the program. So that's pretty cool. All right, that was super easy to put together. Now let's cut out the pieces. Except then make Litchi cut it instead because your thumb hurts. Wait, your? <laughs> this isn't a tutorial. And <laughs> people don't have a Litchi with them. What am I talking about? <laughs> Pattern, pieces, cut out by Litchi. Thanks Litchi, you're the best. Yeah, now I can cut out the fabric. I am slightly concerned about how curvy this armhole is. I've never seen an armhole so curvy. I mean, look at the top of the sleeve. Wow, so curvy. But I don't know, it's my measurement, so hopefully it'll work. All right, I'm doing the pattern layout, tucking it on this fabric and cutting it out. I am changing one thing. It wants the back to be in two separate pieces, so there would be a seam down the center back, which I said I didn't want on the pattern. So I'm gonna be cutting that out on the fold instead, disregarding this, because I'm a rebel. Figured out my optimal layout, and I'm actually using a lot less yardage than the yardage calculator said I should. I'm counting that as a win. Okay, time to snippity snip. Okay, so everything's cut out and actually looks like, this looks super duper cute. I really like this. I really hope it works. Okay, so I've just had a read through of the instructions and they are strange. It's got really, really detailed instructions about some aspects of this, but then other parts are just completely left out. Like, there's nothing about how to do the sleeves. And there's a lot of irrelevant stuff, like I'm not using any of that. And honestly, I'm fine because I've had a lot of experience with sewing tops. I know what I'm doing here. Really, the only thing I wasn't sure about was the square neck and the facing for that, which it does have a detailed diagram for, so I'm okay. But I don't think this would be awesome for beginners. I think they would find this really difficult because these instructions, you kind of have to pick and choose what you actually got to use. So it's not super beginner friendly. But then again, I think Taylor Nova's target demographic probably isn't beginners either. And like I said before, they're kind of just out of beta mode, I'm pretty sure, so I can excuse them for that, and I'm still gonna be able to put this top together. All right, so the first step is bust shirring. Excuse me, this is not shirring. This is gathering. So with my sewing machine, I've gotta stitch a long basting stitch and then gather the front piece so that the side seams are equal to the length of the back. Okay, and they're the same length. Woohoo! This is what I mean about irrelevant and missing instructions. The next part that's on the instructions is doing the neckline facing, uh, which is after the shoulder and side seams are already sewn, which is good because I already know how to do those. Then it'll be up to that. All right, this is very exciting because I get to try it on. Ready? It fits! <laughs> 
I'm so excited. It's nice. It fits in really well. Ah, I think we're doing the facing for this now and then the sleeves. I'm very excited as to where this is going though. Look at it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the square facing. So I've just got to sew this together and sew it together to that. And transition. All right, time to do this. This is a little bit confusing, but I think I can figure it out. Basically, I've got to put this over the top of this and then sew it somehow. <laughs> I'll figure it out. All right. So I did a bunch of stay stitching around the neckline because I think that's what this was telling me to do. And now I'm going to touch it to the top. This one still has like the center back open because I decided I didn't want that. Hopefully it will still work. All right, I think I got it. Pinned it on. So now I think I've got to sew it on to the seam allowance distance away from the edge. I think. Mm, I hope. <laughs> Can you tell I don't do facings very often? Yay, I did it. So now I'm gonna clippity clip the notches and then flippity flip the facing. Kablamo, time for understitching. Now, this isn't a tutorial on understitching and I'm not really going to do that technique justice here. In short, what I am doing is I am sewing the seam allowance to the facing and that will hopefully keep the facing down underneath the top. And I'm also going to be using a zigzag stitch on this because it is a knit. Wish me luck, I don't do this very often. <laughs> 10 hundred hours of ironing later. You know, I don't think that facing is something that's regularly done for knits. Firstly, when I tried to look up tutorials on how to do understitching for knits with facing, I couldn't really find any. Secondly, this has been finicky AF. And if I was to do this again, I would probably do something like binding, more like what I did for this top here. This has taken me a really long time and uh, I don't think I would ever be bothered to do this again. It has like pretty much worked. I'm just gonna have to tack the facing on with some hand stitches at a few different points so that it doesn't lip up. No knit is supposed to have a facing like this. This is a woven type of facing, but that's what the pattern told me to do, so. Whoops, <laughs> we learn. I'm gonna try it on again and see how it goes. It's fine. It's pretty funny though, the um, the facing extends outside of the strap here, so I'm just gonna like chop it where it overextends and then the rest of it will get caught up in the sleeve. Hopefully that will be a lot less painful. Oh, why did I do the side seams before doing this? I'm making some bad life choices this episode. Well, at least I know it fits. <laughs> Time to unpick the top of the side seams. Okay, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna, I will just ease the sleeves in there. I'm gonna fold the sleeves in half and sew them together like this. Okay, done. Now I'm going to attach both of these to the shirt at the notches. And now I can attach the cuffs and done. All right, I'm done. I don't think I'm gonna bother hemming the bottom of it because I only ever wear high-waisted things with my top tucked in. So no one's gonna see my amazing curved hemline. Why did I add it? So now, it's time for the reveal. <gasps> Final conclusion. So this top worked out pretty well and it definitely looks really good on camera, but I do have some small problems with it. This exact neckline is probably not super suitable for a knit. It's probably gonna stretch out over time and not look too good. And it's a little bit too wide for me. On the design, um, when I was doing it on the computer, it definitely didn't look too wide. But you can see here how little fabric there is between the neckline and the sleeves. It's, it's very wide. That's kind of on me, I did choose deep wide neckline um, when I was designing the top. And that's because the not deep one looked sort of weird on the design. I also just finished making these shorts which are also a tailor over pattern because I wanted to try out bottoms. This was my first attempt and I used this nice blue corduroy. It has pockets and a zip at the back and I also did insert some elastic to just make it slightly more comfortable. They worked out pretty well except that uh, when I did initially Put the design in this was supposed to have an elasticated waistband but they didn't give me enough waistband 
to do one, so I had to add a zipper. So apart from that small problem though, they fit really well. So actually, after I made this, I did get myself a Taylor Nova membership um, so I could see the 3D model and how that works. Here is the top that I made on the model and it looks exactly like how it looks like on me which is pretty exciting. This model is exactly to my proportions, by the way. If I was gonna redo the design, I would use the less wide square neckline instead. But because I know that this pretty much works and I already have the pattern, I'm just gonna edit the pattern that I have. A bigger thing was that um, the pattern gave me facing, so I was like, okay, I'll use facing. The facing is a weird choice for a knit. And if I was gonna do it again, like I said already, I would probably do some kind of binding instead. Finally, the armholes aren't as tight as I would like them probably just make that armhole bit a couple of inches shorter but all in all it turned out really well I also do have a couple of things to note about the software itself it is definitely not made for a beginner audience you probably should know what you're doing like if you're thinking well could I do this am I at a level where I could do this I would say that you are if you are comfortable with putting the garment together without instructions. Because the sewing instructions, they are super detailed about some things, but then they just like left out major sections like how to sew it together and how to do bishop sleeves and stuff. And having some knowledge about like, maybe don't use a facing on a knit. Hopefully they are going to work on this and add better detailed instructions because I think if they do, it would become a really beginner friendly website, which would just be amazing. I was also thinking about about, like what about non-standard body shape so the software at the moment is definitely mm, tailored to a like feminine body shape with a bust and wider hips I'm honestly not so sure how it would work for androgynous or more masculine um, figures and in regards to sizing it's pretty size inclusive it does say on the website's FAQ that they are able to do petite sizes and also sizes up to 70 inch hips and 60 inch busts so that's pretty size inclusive they say that they're working on adding an even greater range soon so that's pretty cool on the intellectual property side if you don't have a membership then these patterns are only for personal use but if you do have a membership then you can use them commercially apparently they also have pattern grading across different sizes that it lets like automatically does for you which is if that works that is amazing so i can imagine the paid membership would be really really helpful for anyone who is starting a small pattern or sewing or clothing business i think it would be really useful i do want to stress that the criticisms that i have about the website so far are quite minor because for what this is which is a 3d pattern making software that is cheap and also usable for novices like it doesn't require really any um former knowledge of how to draft patterns or 3d modeling which other software does i think it is the first kind of software of its type that is so accessible to home sewists which is really cool and i signed up for a membership because i think it's an amazing tool that i am going to be able to use to develop just like standard patterns and um, I'm really excited to recreate different vintage looks that I find on like Pinterest and stuff. I also think that it is quite new and has the potential to develop into an even more powerful software. I think it has the potential to become really beginner friendly if they do get those sewing instructions a little bit more, less messy. <laughs> And yeah, once they work these kinks out, um, like there's definitely some bugs in it. I'm pretty sure it's just out of beta. I think it's gonna be amazing. Again, this wasn't sponsored or anything. I just wanted to nerd out about this cool new sewing software for a while. Um, and if you do try it out, please message me, tag me on Instagram or like message me on Patreon. I would really like to see how it works on different body types and figures and just to see what you all think about it because I'm really excited about it and I wanna nerd out with you. <laughs> Um, so that's it from me today. I just wanted to let you all know as well that I, um, I've been very close to this goal for a while on Patreon and I was just like, I just, I, I really need the extra help. So I've hired a new editor. The person who is my new editor has edited this whole video that you've seen right now. And, um, they've done a really good job of it. I was just not happy with how often I was getting videos out and I also really wanna be able to pay them. So if you've been thinking about supporting me on Patreon for a while, I'm hoping that with this, my content can become more frequent and also more creative. So I'm really looking forward to it. That's it from me. I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching and stay crafty, everyone. Bye. Hey, Annika. Yes? I think you, I think you got the, the quarantine sillies. No, what about this is silly? I think you got the cabin fever. No, what do you mean? <laughs> Look, I got 
dressed today. I put my makeup on. Is this going to be in the credits? Yes. Hmm. I think people will be concerned for us. 